Oh, hey there. I'm in Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. I'm in Chapter 2. Check this out. It's really good. I've yet to meet an absolute perfectionist whose life was filled with inner peace. The need for perfection and the desire for inner tranquility conflict with each other. Y'all listen to that. It's very important. Whenever we are attached to having something a certain way better than it already is, we are almost by definition engaged in a losing battle. Rather than being content and grateful for what we have, we are focused on what's wrong with something and our need to fix it. When we are zeroed in on what's wrong, it implies that we are dissatisfied or discontent. Whether it's related to ourselves, a disorganized closet, a dent on the car, a scratch, that's a lot of you guys I know, an imperfect accomplishment, a few pounds around the midline, I know a lot of you ladies struggle with that, some of you men too, um, or someone else's imperfections, the way someone looks, behaves, or lives their life. Are you worried too much about what other people do? The very f act of focusing on imperfection pulls us away from our goal of being kind and gentle. The goal is, is the, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So the being focusing on imperfections pulls us away from those things. This, this strategy has nothing to do with ceasing to do your very best, but with being overly attached and focused on what's wrong with life. It's about realizing that while there's always a better way to do something, this doesn't mean that you can't enjoy and appreciate the way things already are. The solution here is to catch yourself when you fall into your habit of insisting that things should be other than they are. Gently remind yourself that it's okay that life is the way it is right now. In the absence of your judgment, everything would be just fine. If you weren't there, life moves on. That's the thing. As you begin to eliminate your need for perfection in all areas of your life, you'll begin to discover the perfection in life itself. Another cool revelation I had recently, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but uh, I also took a test uh, at the guidance of my mentor. I took a test called the Five Voices. Um, this is specifically for Christians, but it's based on one of the major um, personality tests. So you can you can take any test you want and learn more about yourself. But this one specifically, it showed me that um, I'm a guardian. I'm a guardian of people, and I'm a guardian of, of groups that I participate in, churches or whatever. I thought it was more me just being overly perfectionist, you know, me being things wanting in order and focused on, on, on things being just the right way. And that's part of it. But the other part is that I was trying to protect people. I'm trying to create an environment and I'm trying to create a safe environment uh, for people to worship and to, to fellowship. Um, and so there's good things to that. But then, of course, I do got to work on the perfectionism assets uh, uh, sides of it. So y'all think about that and um, get to know yourself better. Make sure you... You, you're paying attention to when you're being overly focused on somebody else's flaws or things that don't need to be perfect. Like this book says, um, you, when you, be, you begin to eliminate the need for perfection in all areas of your life, you'll begin to discover the perfection in life itself. That's so cool.